Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special, special guest today. We have Craig Patterson. Craig Patterson was a mechanical engineer who retired from his position and went into the world of health and fitness. He actually has um, his own gym. He has, he has worked very hard in the industry of fitness, and he has a lot of knowledge about investing in gyms, building gyms, you know, really helping coaches and people in the industry of fitness. Today, he's here to share all that knowledge with you and show you ways on how you, if you're interested in fitness and health, and you really want to expand in that industry, how you could grow and grow profitably and really actually make those dreams a reality. So it is an honor to have you, Craig, today on the show. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. Um, I know you've been in this industry a lot for a long time and you've learned a lot and you're here today because you really want to share the word and help people. So, you know, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Sure. Thanks, Stacey. I'm happy to be on. It's nice meeting you. That conversation we had before we started was, uh, was really good. Really good. <laughs> you come from an honest place. Um, mm -hmm. That speaks a lot. Yeah, I actually it's 20 years. It's going to be 20 years. I got in the finished industry in September. Uh, I had worked Fortune 100 companies for like a decade, um, most of it on sustainability or building buildings that last 200 years kind of thing. So we, we had a very unique perspective of, um, you know, we're not trying to do it as cheap as possible here day one. We want to see what the thing's going to do, you know, after yeah. year 50 or year 20 even. So uh, I got out of that. Couldn't I was pretty much couldn't work corporate after a decade. They taught us really well. It was like having your MBA and your PhD all rolled up in one after a decade of that. And then I uh, started my own little engineering. I worked for a small firm, saw a hole in the market, and then uh, started my own firm in 2000, 2001. And uh, it it grew like I, I almost went bankrupt 18 months without a single deal, and I, and I just held in there <laughs> so my money was out and. Uh, one architect took a flyer on me just like she, I was like really she was like 17th on my list and I was prepared to go to the bank and declare bankruptcy and tell my parents I'd failed and, and uh, kind of move on anyway she bailed me out and then within three years we had uh, we had a three million dollars a year in um, in engineering like uh, revenue like wow. design work you know so it was yeah. It was quite overwhelming and you know they had to, we had to hire a lot of people and anyway I got into dispute with my partner at the time, um, the payments towards what I had done weren't maybe coming fast enough. Mm -hmm. So there was a settlement. Uh, I, I did leave that industry and it was by accident. I ran into Greg Glassman, who became the founder of CrossFit. Um, he was just getting going. I mean, he'd been a few years into it, I guess. And, and uh, like he was living in a one bedroom rented house and, and there was like five of us around at the time. There was a lot of talent, but uh, anyway, somehow I just never, I went back. I was gearing up to do another engineering firm, and and uh, I just somehow never got back there. I just started working out, and then my friends were like, "Wow, what are you doing?" And then uh, they started working out with me. If I got them to pay five bucks an hour to this gym that would have me, yeah. uh, and then I raised my rates to ten bucks. I love telling the story, Stacy. And half of the people quit. <laughs> <laughs> so either had the wrong people, or uh, I wasn't any good at it. It was probably a combination. Uh, but within six months, um, you know. I had these little groups and doing personal training and little group and, and doing this, uh, you know, it was pretty, I wouldn't call it extreme fitness, but it's not really at the time. It wasn't really too late out for longevity, but we were all pretty young at the time and, and uh, going hard was fun and, and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I had about 30, 35 clients bringing in about $8,500 a month. And then uh, I, you know, I basically grew, oh, grew that place. And all the personal trainers were like, yeah, you guys got to get out of here because our people wanted to work out with uh, their people wanted to work out with us. I want to steal clients. Anyway, decided to open a gym, made the same mistakes that I see thousands and thousands of gyms that open up make, which is try to bring in too many people too fast. You know, we got to fill this space with people that mm -hmm. uh, that thought just bad. If, if anybody listening wants to open up a gym or you're a personal trainer and you want to start. Um, yeah don't do it. Right. So we started, I made almost every mistake we did. I had two partners. They're still friends, but within six months, uh, we went from, you know, I used to do 10 personal training sessions and put someone in a small group and really curate that and curate the person. So I knew exactly what was going on with that person before we put him in any kind of a group. And, uh, yeah. 
that we opened up and everybody we talked to from, you know, the CRM people to the marketing people, to the insurance people, to even CrossFit headquarters. It was like, you know, you got to put people right into a group class and, you know, yeah. uh, and then the coaches that, oh, the only need is a two day course on how to do uh, this movement and uh, you're good to go. Right. Get the, uh, go get 200 people and $200 a month. So you're doing this napkin math. And this is, this is how uh, right now, as we've talked, probably five franchises have opened up the exact way that I know it's going to fail eventually, uh, which is you look at the napkin math and you go, oh, shit, I got this much space. This is what my rent's going to cost. I put 200 people in there at $300 a month now, whatever it is, 200. And uh, well, that's 50,000 a month or 40,000 a month. And there's my payroll. I'm rich. You know what I mean? Like I'm rich. I'm going to make a ton of money here. And then yeah. they see that. And the first few months, it actually is that if the marketing is good enough. And right. then all the problems start. And then it, then it, it, the clients leave, the coaches leave, and the gym owners left holding the bag. So, yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. Within nine months, we were $73,000 in debt. We had hundreds of people come through there. And we did it the way that almost all these small gyms are run. Um, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like from, a, from almost every operation aspect for the client, for me, the coach, it didn't make any sense. Now I gone from making 8,500 a month and I'm not making anything. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I look, I look around, there's like 30 people left and we'd had at least 150 come through and they're the 30 people I personally trained and curated and, and did properly for nine, for six, to nine months before we opened that business. So I, uh, I fired everybody. Um, I got my partners to, to buy me out and I started all over in a new location from scratch. Um, with no marketing or no, no anything. And within, uh, within two years, I, I paid off all that debt and saved another 150,000, uh, um, in total in, in like in the bank. And then, um, we had around $50,000 a month recurring revenue. Our retention rate was 85 to 90% a year. And, uh, my coaches, I just started training my one buddy who quit his job and slept on my couch. And, um, he was making 80,000 a year within, two and a half years. So, yeah. Wow. So then we, yeah, that was, so we just been going from there. That was 2004 when I started. So yeah, now our location in Vancouver, that same coach, Trevor Linwall, T-Bear, it was yeah. slept, actually slept under my desk. We call it the dog bed. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's still there. He's entering his 19th year and uh, you know, he makes between 80 and 120,000 a year. He takes five, six, seven weeks of paid vacation. And uh, he's still there. I got three coaches that have been there more than 18 years. And I got three more that have been there more than 10. And, you know, they can, they can have life events happen to them, which is what's really important to me. Like one guy got hurt. Another one had a son die and bereavement leave. And yeah. Anyway, I feel like I've talked too much already, Stacey. No, not at all. You know, one of the things I was wondering is, you know, you go on today and there are so many people, you know, advertising for fitness, advertising for gyms, <laughs> advertising on how to, you know, create a gym, how to, you know, make these millions and millions of dollars. What are some of the myths and truths, you know, that people kind of get misled on? Like, especially with the myths, you know, people, there's, there's so many people out there that claim to be successful, claim to have, you know, the, the actual, you know, way to do it, that they're going to be, you know, they're going to be so successful and this and that. How do you know when the red flag is up and how do you know what to look for? I can tell you there's, there's three things that are clear as day. Every single time they'll fail over the long run. And every one of those companies is probably a success is all doing it, which is, Hey, we can bring in 30 new people into your gym. You know, you're going to increase your revenue by 50,000 in, in the first month alone. And, uh, so that's number one. If you put people straight into a group class, you bring a massive amount of people in immediately. All of those people are going to churn at least 70%. They're going to be seven. Like right now, let's say we brought 100 people in. Yeah. By the end of the year, there'll be less than 20 of them. That's a guarantee. If you mm -hmm. don't actually sit down and do a proper consultation, get to understand why they're there, get to understand what they need, what their psychology is, what they actually want. Uh, if you're just trying to sell them some workout and come into this group class and do that, like, I hate to hate to sound obtuse with something like this, but it's not a real gym. You're not doing real coaching. You're basically a pawn of a marketing company or um, a licensee or a franchiser, so that yeah. they can go sell 
to the next gym and the next gym and the next gym, right? And right. anybody who's been there for a long time, it's been a personal trainer. They know they know those things, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's number one. Number two is the coach development program to teach these people that you're bringing in through this mass marketing thing. Um, if that's any less than two years, it's uh, it's probably a scam. You know what I mean? Come take this three day course and you're a coach to go train this workout. Um, you, you can kind of see the chessboards, you know, the pieces on the chessboard there, right? Yeah. Those, those people are heading straight into like straight into the fire and they'll right. get roasted. They don't last much longer than 18 months, right? Um, yeah. And then the third thing is, the, the, there's what's the gym owner, um, what's the gym owner's long-term strategy to get clients and coaches? Is it gonna be marketing forever? Because mm -hmm. if it is, you're, you're done. Uh, we right. do 1.3 million a year and we have zero marketing budget, zero. Wow. Yeah, it's all based on referrals and reputation. Yeah. So you build your <laughs> reputation by treating people properly. And if you're jamming yeah. 10 people into a class and you don't know, or five or three or even one, you don't know them, here, come do this workout, do this group class, right? If you're doing that, yeah. you're never gonna develop a great reputation for being a great gym or a great right. trainer or a great coach. It just, it is impossible. When I look yeah. at it from where I sit back, the thing looks so effing ridiculous that mm -hmm. uh, I get a little jaded from it because to do it right, you have to play the long game. You re you really have what 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 have you, anybody what has anybody ever got in life, Stacy, doing it quick and fast and and banging out a whole bunch of money first day, right? Oh yeah, is that yeah. how the world works? You know, mm -hmm. that's that, and it should be that simple. Look at the eye test; it should be that simple. But um, you know, on our website, you can look at a few things. There's a we have a called PT first is how you train actually come in and do a proper professional consultation how you take someone through a three-day assessment you know and charge 350 bucks with a three-day assessment yeah. and then how you take them through a whole proper fundamentals program before you could put them in a small group or a large group if you wanted to right there's uh, in our on our website we show how to do that I've pretty much given that away it's like 97 bucks PT first and um yeah, if, if, if there's only one thing anybody gets from this and you're someone sitting there, they own a gym or they're a personal trainer who wants to open a gym or they've already bought a franchise and they're like, see, this, this doesn't look right. I don't know how this is going to work long term. That yeah. one strategy of not jamming new people into a group is uh, that's step one. Right. We've, got a, we've got something called the nine laws. And uh, if you look at the marketing companies and the franchises, they pretty much break all nine laws of success. So, yeah, that, that's one, the coach development. And then what is what is your long-term strategy? Because if, if you can't see your way past paying the marketing companies, yeah, it'll, uh, yeah, it'll get eaten alive. It's the thing, it just churns too much, right? Right. And they almost rely on it. If it worked good, they'd be out of business. I think one of the things you said is really important is the retention rate, like having people <clears> stay there for a long time, you know, that, you know, you want clients that are going to continue, continuously sign up and, and continuously, you know, work your program and come into your gym, you know, day after day, month after month, year after year, you know, you can sign up, you know, a thousand people, but if you're only having, you know, a, you know, not even 10% of those people staying, you know, you have a problem there, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, that's one of the biggest problems that I see, like, in, in in a lot of industries and 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 gyms too is that you know they they quadruple the amount of people that's supposed to be there they don't have enough coaches they don't have enough people training and then you have all these people there and they're kind of left you know they kind of throw them in the area they show them real quick what to do and you know then they leave and they go to the next person and the next person and the person doesn't even know if they're doing doing it the right way and they're they're like you know is this what I'm paying for? You know, and uh, you know, I, I've seen that a lot. That's happened even to me, you know, just being in a gym and, and having a coach and, and, you know, the place that has great equipment, you can see they spent a lot of money on equipment, but there's so many people there that, you know, that they spent a couple minutes with you. They run to the next person and you don't see them for like 10, 15 minutes later. And, you know, that's not, that's not good, you know, customer service. Yeah. Well, there's no relationship really built because you can't do it in a group. You know what I mean? Like I had an old client and um, <laughs> this a long time ago, hope I can see this in your show, but it kind of encapsulates everything. It's like, listen, 
Patty. Nobody's going to tell you they got genital herpes in a group of 10 people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might just, I might do it. But you know what I mean? You don't get to know someone. That one-on-one -on -one relationship is really what is at the core of our yeah. retention, right? And having the coaches, you know, if you've got a coach been there 18 years, like we've got, the last count that I had, we got 170 people that have been there for more than five years, right? Wow. Yeah, it's a crazy number. And then uh, more than 10 years and more than 15 years, like uh, it's, um, it's the, the root of it is a relationship, right? That's why I don't worry about gyms that come along anywhere in an area that are promoting those, you know, get rich, quick, get fit, quick schemes and uh, jam all these people in all because they're already gone. And anybody ever leaves our, our gym, they want to go try the new thing. I go, dude, go check it out. Go check it out. And you'll, you'll see. And they go mm -hmm. there and you know, they don't make a relationship with anybody. And there's people coming and going, the coaches are coming and going, the clients are coming and going. There's no, there's no chance of actually building a real community in that setting. And that's yeah. what, uh, that's what, I mean, that's at the end of the day, we're trying to build healthy communities. And if you look at the, the stats around people that don't have those close relationships, it's like packing, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. If yeah. uh, you're kind of alone, you know what I mean? And you know, we've got, We've got every kind of person in that gym, but it's, I don't mind the, the people that, you know, are maybe a little bit introverted as well and have a harder time meeting people. They'll, they'll, they'll find a little community there. Um, yeah. Cause uh, they're going to see the same people, you know, right. it takes a little longer to get to know someone. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my mission is to, to kill that investor class that's coming along and, and, I mean, they shouldn't know that I can't, maybe they, maybe it's willingness. Maybe it's just, Hey, I can bring 50 people and make this money. At the end of the day, I, I think it's wanton destruction almost. It's like, they know that these gyms can't. So here, surefire, if anybody's there and you get your marketing company in there, so they, they fill your gym up and then, you know, what happens next? The people leave, then they become consultants. So they've never run uh, <laughs> proper gyms. They don't have like, we got, I got accredited as a college. Took me mm -hmm. took me eleven years to get accredited as a college for the trainers to actually be properly trained, right? Uh -huh. So what happens next is the the marketing company you know them you mentioned the ones before there's they've been coming and going now for a decade is uh, they become consultants now they, uh, they 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 do this mastermind and they bring all the most successful ones in their network and they get together and they talk about how they're successful and then the person's got to buy that one now the gym owner and the coaches or whatever got to go to that one. And I'll tell you, there's no answers in that one. That one there, there's still all the people are, are breaking the nine laws. They're, they're still putting people straight in a group class. The coaches don't have actual real training. They don't get communication training, enrollment training, business training, account management training. They don't get taught to be professionals. Um, yeah. It's the same. It's, it's an echo chamber of everybody that's doing it. What I would say the wrong way, which is not the long game. It's the short game. So. Yeah, if, if you're wondering what the next scam is, if your marketing company becomes a consultant, and then now they're a con business consultant, yeah. Mm -hmm. They got to they gotta plug the holes there. And people are leaking through it. They got to come along and try, and that's their next business, and they, they capitalize upon it. And it's they follow right. the mastermind model that Russell Brunson and those guys did a decade ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you keep that longevity? Like you mentioned some things in our, in our prior discussion, you know, you were talking about getting to know people, have a customized program with the people, you know, what are, you know, what are some ways that, you know, fitness um, owners, you know, if they're trying to fill their gym, they're trying to get a decent income, they really want to grow and they want to build their gym, you know, what are some, some tips of the trade of, of keeping long-term customers and being able to really grow your gym to that potential that you really want it to be? Yeah, I think uh, we've got that really well explained in our nine laws. And the, the first four laws are, here's what you do with the clients, right? And I mentioned that before, personal training first, but really understanding how to do a professional consult like a, like a physiotherapist would do, like a orthopedic surgeon would do, like a, a lawyer would do, like mm -hmm. even if you brought a, um, maybe, you know, if you almost any professional relationship you go into, you're going to sit down with that person and tell them what's going on. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah, in yeah. fitness, they go like, we, we, we know what you need. Just come on in, jump in and do this. Right. Yeah. It's, it's absurd. <laughs> the thing is right. so absurd that we got sold this, that we believe that that's what works. 
it doesn't work for the long term. It, it simply does not have long term staying power. What always has staying power is building a relationship between two human beings to solve a problem or work on a goal of the person actually needs and wants. Yes. Right? So sit down and go, Stacy, why are you here? <laughs> well, you know, I want to lose some weight. Well, come on, Stacy, why do you want to lose some weight? Well, you know, I, my, I want to keep up with, I, I don't want to turn into my grandmother or I want to keep up with my kids or niece and nephew. And you get deeper and deeper and deeper. So you might be shedding a tear because you had an older one that's gotten so frail now that you can see yourself there. You know, I mean, there's a million of them. But if yeah. you don't actually get to that, if you don't actually have that conversation, that person's right. going to leave. A person's yeah. going to leave. But when you get to the bottom of that conversation of why they're there, why it really means their life, what's important, and how we go about tackling this, right? Yeah. Like, if you're going to try and make the Olympics here, or if we're just trying to stay strong and fit and help your mental health, like, there's, a, they're all, they're different, there's a million different ways we can tackle this problem, right? Right. So that, that would be the... That would be the biggest piece of advice I could give anybody that's uh, going down the path. And that'll go completely against what the marketing companies and the franchisers and everything will tell you, right? Right. So you don't, you don't need to do any of that because, you know, what do they know? They're coming along and trying to open up 500 of these things and then yeah. sell it to a hedge fund and make their, their return on investment get out. That's the only yeah. model that they have is what's currently entrenched all over America, United States, Europe. You name it, right? It's just, uh, right. yeah. Curves, Curves really did a great job perfecting that model, and then CrossFit came along and, and took another step forward. And then you look at F45; they've come along, and then the market, all those different marketing companies. Like the F45 one's my my favorite. I've friends that bought three of them, and after after a year or two, like holy shit, you know what I mean? There's all these problems and this and that. And then you know they go public, and the CEO immediately quits and cashes out at eighteen dollars. And the stock goes to two cents, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what happened here? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's actually when, when you you get involved in it, you look at it for a lot. I don't know anybody who's listening that's worked in a gym or currently owns one or even people that go to them. Um, the veil should be lifted pretty fast on what's really going on in there. And I'll, I'll give you an example when it really hit home to me. It was 2017. I got I went over to, to speak at a conference in um, in London, England, and I got approached from a guy at the end. He goes, "I love what you're doing, and I want to make it the backstop for this new franchise thing." Right? And I was like, I wasn't as skeptical as I am now about them because I didn't fully, still completely understand it. But I was like, okay. So we end up going to this meeting, and and um, you know, there's the financial guys. There's the guy that's got the back of the money. There's the guy that runs these things, and um, you know, they're they're they've been doing it for quite some time. And, um, you know, they go in with, okay, I go, what's your client development process going to be? And I didn't know what that meant. And then I explained to them, what do you do with the person as soon as they walk in the door? Right. And they're like, well, I'll show you into a group class. I go, you realize you're going to lose 80% of those, 70%. And they're like, mm, maybe. And then they get the guy, the quantitative in the back, he's running numbers. And he's like, yeah, you're right. We'll probably lose 70 or 80% of those, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> the guy, you know what I mean? They're like, well, we can do this. We can run this iteration in this area for at least five years before we have negative feedback on the market, right? Right. And then I'm like, well, okay, well, that kind of counts me out, but I was curious. And I was like, okay, what about the coach development? You know, we have a, a two-year accredited program for the coaches, and they're going to learn, you know, they're going to learn how to be professionals and run their own business, essentially, inside of a gym. And yeah. they're like, no, oh, no, we have got no time for that. It's got to be two or three days. You know, and then the guy in the back goes, what is this guy talking? We we have to be completely out of this thing in five years. We don't have time for that. And I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> I get it. Like, I get it. I've been in this thing for 15 years myself, and I still didn't quite get it. believe yeah. it was really that. You know what I mean? I didn't quite believe it was really that, but that's what it really is. It's a bunch of financial douchebags sitting around at the top coming up with a way to enrich themselves and pushing that down through the market, right? Yeah. And you got someone new at a school or someone, you know what I mean? You got someone who doesn't want to work in corporate America anymore or, you know, someone who's middle management in a company that's trying to do something on the side, a side hustle, or, you know, a soccer mom that's like, and they get pitched this thing. 
that they yes. can understand really quickly. Hey, we can put 200 people at $250 a month. You know, we hire these people, just sign on the dotted line, 500,000 bucks and you're good to go, right? Yeah. So they understand it that quickly and then all the problems start, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think the people that could really benefit from our message the most are the ones that are working in a gym or their personal trainers or they're in a gym that's, they, they, they know they can see the problems and they still have the energy yeah. to correct them. There's yeah. a lot of people that have been fighting that fight for too long. It's almost too late. I would, I would, you know, if you're already burnt out from it, I would say just time to wrap that thing up. But uh, yeah, for anybody who's still got the energy and wants to make a difference, because what, what this really does at the end of the day is it creates a great community um, of clients and coaches that is long-term sustainable and profitable that treats his clients and coaches with dignity. And right. uh, also the gym owner makes enough profit, about 20% of the EBITDA goes to the gym owner once it's fully up and running. And then right. they can also exit when it's their time. You know, like yeah. I said, I've been 20 years. I'm not, it's not quite my time yet, but I don't have 20 more. And I, I already have a succession plan to pass this on to the, to the next generation that's got the energy to keep on going and take it further. Right? So, right. yeah. Yeah. So do you like teach people how to open up, you know, sustainable gyms that have long-term effects that actually can retain their customers? Yeah. So um, we've got a, like a, an accredited school, college for coaches and for gym owners. And um, every person, whether it's a gym owner or a coach that enters our um, organization gets their own mentor. So they get someone who's, is a gym owner, you know, they've, they've, they've gotten to that threshold of having four full-time coaches and, you know, a million dollars a year and, and all the struggles that go to get there. Cause it's still not easy. It's still human beings trying to kill themselves every day. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then for the coaches that every one of them's had to, you know, produce at least $8,000 take home right. uh, and done it for five years. You know, the, the thing that gets sold in our industry the most is, Oh, this gym is a million dollar gym. Right. A million dollar gym. I go for how long? <laughs> you got the right marketing company. You can just, you can fill anybody. Anybody could own a million dollar gym with the right marketing company. It's a matter of how long you've been doing it. If you've been doing it for five years or 10 years or 20, I believe you. If you're doing it for two, any, anybody could do it. Anybody. Right. I could literally prop up an 81 year old man, <laughs> put him at the front. <laughs> and he's done it, you know? So, right. yeah. Anyway, madlabbusiness.com. If you go on Instagram, it's madlabbusiness. Um, you can talk to a real human being and either one, I will talk to anybody that uh, is really interested in this stuff and, and wants to have a career or a gym or, or be a coach in one of these types of gyms. We've got hundreds of them around the world. They're still, they're still not front and center. They don't, they don't use my name. I don't want the brand that would make me force me to do things that I don't want to do like quality control. So mm -hmm. everybody's got to do their own thing. And uh, have to start bullying people. So it's we teach you how to have your own brand and do it your own way. So it's uh, we're arm's length, and we we train gym owners and coaches how to play the long game, essentially, Stacey. Yeah. Right. I yeah. like that. I like that a lot. And I think it's great too for coaches because there's so many people out there that you know struggle to get their name recognized as a coach, and especially in the fitness world because it, it's yeah. so you have such a, a large population trying to be fitness coaches. And, you know, it's easy to get lost in the barrel because there's so many out there, you know, so, you know, being accredited, I guess, in the school, you know, and, and really learning the right way to do it could actually help someone to actually grow and, and be a profitable coach. Yeah, you don't have to be very good at marketing. All, all you got to do is be really good with your first client, your second client, your third client, do a great job with them. They'll grab their friends and family because you've done a great job with them. And then you go from there, like uh, all the coaches coaches that come in, they're like, should I get great at Instagram and marketing and all that stuff? I go, well, if you're not a very, if you're not going to be any good at a coach and you want to spend all day on there, maybe, but yeah. you essentially don't need, I mean, it's good to have a presence and anything you're doing there is great to show what you're actually doing. Yeah. If you're spending a whole bunch of money on marketing, you're probably never going to get very good at what your craft is. So the world will tell you if you're good or not, if uh, friends and family are coming in and uh, then you don't really have to worry about that stuff at all. You just become a really great coach inside of a great network. You can do it on your own. 
and it gets yeah. to a certain level where it, ha- it helps to have two or three of you together. Uh, right. It actually works as a coach co-op inside of our, our model. They have their own charter and the whole deal. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Our 501k stuff, like all of it, you know? So um, yeah, we're just trying to do the right thing uh, and hang in there for as long as it takes to do it, you know? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Now, when you have fitness coaches, do you also help health health coaches also, uh, like nutrition coaches and stuff like that? Or are you just focused yeah. on the fitness coaches itself? Well, we focus on teaching them the soft skills to become really good business people. At the end okay. of the day, I'm a, I'm a business person, to be honest. And yes. even the fitness protocol you use, we have a specific one we use in our facility, but I, I train Pilates gyms, Pilates coaches, gymnastics, powerlifting. I mean, you name it, we've got it in our network at one time or the other, even yoga. You know, like uh, the idea of yoga now has become join a group class so much so that they wouldn't, they wouldn't what I go do a personal training session for yoga, dude. It's awesome. Personal training. So if, if everybody did personal, 10 personal training sessions with a yeah. really good yoga instructor before they got into that group thing, just imagine how much better everything would be. Right. Right. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're, we're doing. And then the coaches are paid on, on uh, how well they perform, not by a dollar per hour. Right? right. So if you just paid someone here's $25 an hour for, for uh, a group class. And then here's like, 45% for a personal training session. What happens if they get sick for two weeks? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're done. You know, yeah. whereas our, our model is really based on retention and average client value and bringing in new clients. So it's like their own little business inside of our business, working together with all the other coaches to form this co-op. And uh, I take a smaller percentage of the pie. I'm, I'm sure the guys filling the, the gym up with the marketing, uh, the marketing guys are getting paid first. They're good. They're off. Uh, the franchisers getting paid first. They're good. They're off. The gym owner, if he can, if the marketing isn't costing too much, he's probably taking a bigger piece of the pie at the very start of that thing. Um, yeah. That's not sustainable either, right? right. So my pie, my pie, I take twenty percent of the pie at the end of the day after the tax man. Everybody's paid. I'm uh, I'm sitting here with the twenty percent of it, which is I'm fine with because I don't have any much to do anymore. It's like the gym runs itself pretty much. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and the, I mean, the coaches in it have been really good friends of mine for a long time, the first three or four. And, uh, you know, we hang out socially, not as much as before. We all have families now. But, yeah, um, yeah I hang out with them, go golfing, say, hey, what's going on? Go surfing. Can I help you? Mm-hmm. you know, like, they, they bitch about some person they're having a beef with, but that's about it. And then uh, right. they're doing good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you had to take um, some a couple of the things that we talked about today, if you wanted to emphasize on, on some important factors, what are some of the things you'd like to have the listeners understand? What would you like to emphasize on some turning point? Well, I mean, I think it depends on if you're a client or if you're a, a coach or if you're an owner. You probably got all three on here. If you're a mm-hmm. client uh, uh, and they tell you to come straight into a group class and, and you got the, the coach reading off a a screen or there's a TV there or something, it's, it's probably yeah. not your best method to longevity in the fitness industry. Right. It could be a good mm-hmm. workout for the day. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that really, but if you're looking for a long-term solution, you should find someone that's going to at least do a first day consult and get to yeah. know you and develop a plan for you, whether that's right. just personal training or you're working out on your own or like eventually like 80% of our clients go into what I call hybrid membership. So they see their coach, once every six weeks after the two two months of personal training. And then yeah. they see their coach once every six weeks and they go to a group class that's tailored for them inside of there. That would take right. me a while to explain, but everybody's got their own progression and everybody knows where they're at. Like if you're gonna do a press, there's probably five different kinds of presses we would do depending on where your flexibility level, strength level, um, skill level is, you'd be doing one of the easier one to the harder one. And that's right. pretty much a squat. There's five different kinds of squats a deadlift, like you're hinging, pulling, yeah. pushing, squatting, right? So all inside of there, we're teaching, we're teaching movement patterns, right? Like so, that. yeah. So if you're a client, you want to go to a gym, you should know all the different movement patterns and, and your limitations in every one of them so that mm-hmm. you can incrementally get better without hurting yourself. So if you're going straight right. into this group thing, where there's like, hey, today is like we're going to be throwing bars over our head, and uh, you're going to be hanging off of bars and pulling, without any consideration of your you, your limitations. It's uh, yeah, it's 
reckless, I would say. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. That's on the client side. From the coach side, if uh, the company you're, you're working for hasn't given you at least a year or two of training, not just on the movements, but how to, how to actually become a professional so that mm -hmm. you can make at least $100,000 a year in a major center, small town, maybe right. 60. If the company you're working for is not doing that for you, then they're not actually trying to help you. They're just trying to exploit you for the little bit of time they can have you for. And like yeah. I look at, I joined uh, Johnson, sorry, I joined Emerson Electric, Fortune 100 of St. Louis when I was 23 years old. I got nine months of sales and business and business training, and then six months of mentorship before they allowed me to go on one business call by myself. And I wow. traveled all over the world. They spent $200,000 on me before I, I was allowed to even attempt my job. Right. Wow. And that's what real companies are doing. Shitty yeah. companies like here's a two day course on how to read the TV and deliver this workout. You know what I mean? That's they're not trying to at all. There's not even should even should be just obvious. They're not trying whatsoever to help this person become a professional in their yeah. in their career. Right. So right. we're interested in career coaches that will do this for 20, 30 years. Right. And I've got guys that have been doing it for almost 20 years and they're not going anywhere anytime soon. And I'm still here. And um, yeah. And then from the business owner side, if you can't see a path where you're going to work less and make more money, mm -hmm. um, it's just going to, the news tightens on you until it just gets worse and worse and badder and badder. And, and the marketing companies that come and tell you they'll sort the problem out or the franchise will come with the new, the new mastermind that will solve the problem and, you know, yeah. or you're on your own and you're following kind of what the, the crowd's doing. I'm telling you, it's a hard thing not to follow the crowd sometimes, but the crowd's, the crowd's full of shit. Yeah. The crowd is full of shit. I it's agree. Not, it's not working. It's simply not working. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's a good question, Stacey. I've, I've been on quite a few podcasts. I've never actually summed it up. Uh, so succinctly, I think. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. you know, it's really important because, it's, you know, you really have to understand, like, for all the content we've talked about, we've hit three different baselines, like you mentioned. You have the consumer, you have the coach, you have the, you know, the fitness owner, you know, and you really want to understand from all three perspectives what, you know, what each person, you know, is thinking, what they need, you know, and because once you understand your client's needs, then you can tend to them. And then you could, like you said, build that relationship and you can really, you know, help them and you can really, you know, help them grow. And, you know, and uh, and for people who are just, you know, they, they're they looking for that great gym, you know, so they don't get red flagged. And they, you know, they go into the gym thinking, have all these hopes and, and, and you know, ideas of what they want to be in the next six months. And they invest all this money and they're, they're the same way they enter the gym, you know, so, you know, kind of, you know, it makes them feel disappointed. And sometimes they lose trust in the whole system. You don't want that, you know, especially nowadays when you have so many things out there, you want to know what's real and what's not. And you want to, you want to make sure you, you invest in the right place. And then when it comes to investing in business, you want to make sure you, you know, if you're going to, you're going to make any type of investment, it's going to be something that is going to be beneficial for you in the future. And like you said, the longevity and, you know, being able to, you know, hold on to those clients. You don't want to have a, a business where, you know, 70 to 80% leave by the end of the year, you know, it just doesn't, it's, it's, it's not, it's not fair for them and it's not fair for you. And, uh, it's the big guy that's winning and nobody, everybody else is kind of falling into the pit. Yep. Yep. Just a number on the board. Number in the board. Now, if people are interested and they want to find you again, can you just repeat your, your website and any contact information that you'd like them to have? Yeah. I mean, if you, um, madlabbusiness.com, madlabbusiness.com, uh, is the website. If you go on there and you just start here and you kind of, you can see what we're up to. I've been told we need a $10,000 update on that website. So I don't know. I thought, I thought it was pretty good now, but you know, our marketing people, we have, we have to play that game a little bit because gyms don't talk to each other. Coaches do. We get referrals from coaches, but gyms rarely talk to each other and try to help each other out. So my, uh, in my, in my facility, Stacy, like, you know, we do a good job of someone. They tell their coworkers or family or friends they come in. Yeah. In uh, the broader industry, I come on a podcast like this to spread the word. Uh, we don't do any paid, paid advertising. I don't know. Maybe we should. But uh, 
word of mouth is tough in that 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 the gym side. The coaches help each other out. So our Instagram, I'm told our Instagram is well run. It's a girl that's a lady that's been in our gym for many many years, and she finally just told me I can't watch it anymore, and so she's taking that over and curated it. I, I'm told it's a lot better. So uh, yeah, Instagram Mad Lab Business, and uh, if you want to talk to me, I am I am down to sitting down and figuring out who you are and what you need and. And if I can even help you, you know what I mean? Like uh, we can we can sort that out. So you, if you are a coach or a gym owner, uh, a coach, I'd probably put you on to one of our instructor or mentor coaches. They'd be better suited now. But uh, yeah. anybody who wants to open a facility or currently has one or works in one, I'm all ears. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. This has been amazing. You know, I'd love to have you back on the show. Maybe we could talk a little bit more about, you know, these three different concepts. Um, I think this has been great because I think there's so much stuff out there that you go cross-eyed sometimes because once one idea comes up, you know, you go back on it the next day and there's three more and then there's five more and then there's seven more, you know, and, you know, people can easily get conned in today's society. So understanding you know, what you're looking for, what you really have to focus on is really important. You know, that way, you know, you don't fall into that business funnel and get ripped off. You want to be able to, you know, have an objective and reach that objective and, you know, reach your goals and dreams and make those realities. So, you know, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I really, you know, admire that, you know, you took your dream and made it a reality and now you're showing others how to do it also. So this has been an amazing talk. I really thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else that you'd like to include in this conversation before we go? No, that's it. All I can say is if you reach into an organization, you're going to find out that it's got integrity, that it is here to help, and it is um, comes from the right place, and we've taken a really long time to do this right, uh, and the people that come into our organization succeed. And if we can't help you, we won't. We, we, won't take, we won't take your money for the sake of it, and you'll get to know, you will get to know someone very well. Like uh, my wife is also, a, she runs the uh, business consulting side and pretty much everybody in there is a good friend. We actually go visit them quite often and and they have her phone number and they're texting. Sometimes we got to shut that down a little bit, but that's the relationship <laughs> you got to develop with us. It's, uh, it's a little different than, than your marketing company, I would say. I love it. This has been amazing, Craig. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure, you know, for this whole conversation, you know, you sharing your knowledge and I really appreciate what you're doing and how you're helping people out there. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Stacey. Thanks for creating your show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank great you. Story. You have a great day. You too.